I'm only human and my emotions change. People's perspectives of me and mine haven't always been the same. Never quite been a type to automatically conform to the norm. Because being like everybody else, that's not how creativity is formed. And I wasn't formed to be like the norm. And out of that shell, my reality was born. That I had words to give. And I do believe that you two have just as good as a gift as me. And two is better than one, so imagine what we could be collectively. The more, the better, respectively. Large groups could change this nation's trajectory, but not the con way. Some people do this for show. This isn't part of that act. You'll be remembered for how you treat others, not your alternative facts. You'll be remembered for how you treat others, not your alternative facts. Positive Filter with your host, Philip Wilkerson, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help around the way. Please join me in this journey for self-improvement, and I hope that what I have to share will make you a better person, thus making the world a better place. Hey, good afternoon, evening, morning, whenever you're listening to this show. Uh, it's Philip Wilkerson back again with another episode of Positive Filter. Um, that intro was a poem by my good friend Aaron R. And I think it was something that's been on my mind, and it's uh, a topic that I want to discuss, and it's about identity and being true to yourself um, and being true to who you are, in even in, I guess, uh, times where you feel like you have to question who you are um, and you feel like the perception that you have of yourself um, doesn't always match how other people see you and then still staying true to yourself. And then, so with that being said, I thought it would be a great idea to have a uh, fan favorite, <laughs> if we have any fans, <laughs> Hillary McMorris. <laughs> so uh, right. Hillary McMorris, back again. Yeah, man, appreciate it. Thank you for having me back again, man. Um, I had a blast the last time. Um, I appreciate everybody that listened to it, man, support my boy Phil, man. I'm telling you, man, you, you got a movement that is doing something great in this world, man. Your son is going to be proud. I know Maggie's proud. I'm definitely proud of you. Um, you know, I, I love what you're doing, man. Yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate it, boss, man. And so, you know, the poem was about staying true to yourself. Uh, and I think there was a line in there that said, um, you know, who I, who I am and something about the other people doesn't always agree. And it had me thinking about recently about a struggle that I've, I've had to come with, with being who I wanted to be or who I thought I was and then how other people perceived me. Um, and I would say more, most specifically, um, in essence to my blackness. And so this might be a little bit of a controversial topic for some, but I think it's something that could uh, possibly help others. And so when I say um, questioning my blackness, I mean, I know I'm black. I, I, I love who I am. I'm proud of who I am. Right, right. Gr- growing up, I always got that, like, you act like a white boy uh, or you act – uh, you know, you don't act like a black person. And I don't know, for right. some reason, that's always irked me or always been like a, a, a really sore subject of mine. But right. just recently, just recently, I've come to accept that who I am and, and being proud of, and being a black male and being a great example of a black male for my son um, I don't know, I just kind of like came to this, like, not like an aha moment, but I really finally come to, like, this acceptance of who I am. Um, right. And so I, I kind of question, do you ever have faced that yourself where you felt like someone questioned, whether it's questioning your blackness or question, um, I guess, your heritage and being Jamaican? You know, have you ever faced that or can identify with that feeling? Um. I mean, I feel like like I definitely have. Um, 
I don't know um, if, if it was because of what someone said to me, per se. Like, no one really said it, like, to my face and was like, you know, man, you don't you don't act Jamaican or you don't act black or, you know, like, I can't remember a time, really. And maybe they somebody did say it, and I, and I, I just can't remember right now. But just within myself. You know what I mean? Like, I questioned it. Like, um, oh, that's interesting. I was saying, like, you know, like, just am I, like, you know, you know, quote, unquote, black, black enough for am I acting? You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just, it was just identity. It was at the time, like, I was just going through, and this is when I was, I was a lot younger. Um, and it was like middle school age. Um, kind of coming into high school a little bit when I was just like questioning, you know, like myself about that and like, how should I act or how should I be perceived and, you know what I'm saying? And not, and, and just struggling. Like I was really, I was really struggling with my culture, um, of, of being Jamaican. I was really struggling, um, with being black. And it, and it was like a lot of it was some of the uh, experiences that I went through, like racial experiences that I went through, and that like I wasn't proud, you know what I mean? And so like when I wasn't proud, it, it, it made me question myself, and it made me like just feel like down about like who I was. So, so okay, so was... so you said, I mean. But you were saying you didn't – like, overtly, I've gotten told to my face. Um, most, you know, like, I would say um, mainly, like, I think one of the main transition periods where I felt like people really particularly questioned that was, like, when I first went to Mount Vernon High School, a public school from private school, you know, that's when it kind of, like, hit me that I was maybe – I say raised differently, but, you know – raised with some privilege, you know, um, right. even being a military brat. Um, mm-hmm. And I think I think it carried over through, you know, a little bit of Mount Vernon for sure, um, and then a little bit in college when I went to Bowie State, historically black school. Um, I, you know, I, I kind of had some examples um, of that. And then I get a little bit at JMU. Um, right. But what – you said it happened in middle school. Was there a particular instance where you said you questioned it yourself and it wasn't external? Like, I had external examples. People tell nah, me like, that. All right, so maybe I, I didn't do a good job explaining. Like, I had, yeah. like, experiences, like, dealing with race. And so with dealing with that stuff, it made me question myself. Like, but no one, like, said to me those words of, you know, you're not black enough or you're not Jamaican uh-huh. enough. You know what I mean? But like, but dealing with racism, um, like it, it made me question my identity and it made me like, at the time, like I just wasn't, I wasn't proud. It, it, like it didn't make me proud of who I was. And so therefore I questioned my identity. Like it did something to my identity, like where I had to like find myself within that and get to a point where, you know what, like I am proud of who I am. And I am proud to be black, and I am proud to be Jamaican. You know what I mean? And so, it was what, just, so what were some examples where you were embarrassed to be Jamaican? I'm finding that interesting because, you know, what were some I things mean, that you like? Just just coming. I mean, coming to the U.S. Like, especially like when I was younger. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm I got I'm you know my family came here. Um, I you know, and I came here. Me and me and my brother came here. I was six. Um, at the time. And so going into first grade and just people, like I had an accent and it was really, it was really thick. And so like people just like laughing and kind of just making jokes about that. And so like, it made me like just quiet. I didn't want to talk, you know what I'm saying? And then like, as I grew up, like it started going away, but it took a while and I, I wanted to conform quicker to like lose that accent mm-hmm. and not share it with people. You know what I mean? Gotcha. And it's like, yeah. And so like, it made me like question myself. It's like, man, like, shouldn't I be proud of this? Like, 
I'm, gotcha. I'm different. And like, why am I not proud of this? You know, it's like I had the identity and it's like, I feel like every time like you have negative experiences with, um, and probably not every time that's so, you know, I don't want to like generalize, generalize everything and just cut, try to cover everything. But when you do have these negative experiences at times in your life, like it impacts you and it makes you question certain things. And for me, mm-hmm. it was at that time, it was just me questioning my identity of like, and my culture, you know? I mean, it's interesting that you say that because I think that that's, I think that in general, I think what the main perception when people say that to me, say, oh, you know, like black or whatever, it's funny how it's straight off of like voice, you know? Like, right. I think that mainly it's language, you know? Um, I guess the way someone talks. And I never thought of it. You know, it's funny, it's interesting that I say that now when, you know, I've always been solo. I've always been me. I've never really fully experienced. I don't think I fully experienced, like, racism as being different until I, like, live in certain places. So, like, you know, you can live in a certain bubble and not feel a certain way. Um, Right. And I didn't feel like, you know, most of my majority of my childhood, I didn't feel a certain, certain type of way until you're thrown in some environment. And I think that right. when you're thrown in new environments, it makes you question who you are. And and as I go back to it, it's like you, you, you said it, too. It's like the perception of yourself is you don't normally doubt who you are as a person until you actually face some kind of adversity. That makes mm-hmm. sense. Right. Like, I don't think I ever questioned was I black enough or if I'm black until I faced a challenge or a situation that made me question that. And, right. and it, it was a really – it's still a hard process because I, I always particularly – every time I had to, like – I'm a more of a thinker and a processor, I'm always like, so at what point of this perception of myself, what makes someone question how I perceive myself? If they really, like, what evidence? Like, me and you are, like, I think, you know, even though we're cut from a different cloth, I don't think I've ever felt like anyone's ever said, yo, Hiller acts acts white. And I think that if we go down the checklist, I mean, we're pretty much very similar people, you know. you We both went to Mount Vernon. We're both black. We both got our master's in counseling. Um, uh, You know, we both have biracial children. Um, all those different factors. And I was always wondering, like, even in my group of all black, like most of my group of friends, my, not my group of friends, I got a wide diverse group of friends, but like in my core high school friends, you know, MP2, um, we're all pretty much similar. I don't think, for me, I don't think I've ever heard anyone else, um, be questioned like that. And I always wondered why was I singled out or why was I considered different than you or Justin or Charles, you know? Um, right. And I don't I don't know. I still don't have no questions for that. I don't have an answer for that. Um, right. But that was something I've been – that's something I've struggled with for a long time. I would say, like, like since high school to now, it's been something I struggled with. And I, I don't know. It just – I think, you know, when you – when I'm really processing it, I'm, I'm trying to think, like, what – what – what – evidence that I present to have the outside world perceive me in such manner. And I think when I think about it, and I, I, I kind of get upset about it, it's like, then I feel like people are wrong because basically they're going to base my blackness based on stereotypes, which I don't really fulfill. And I don't think, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. then I'm like, okay, I know I'm secure in myself. The evidence that people present when I, if I ever, when I do ask someone, I'm like, Hey, you know, like Phil, you don't, you know, you know, you know, like the the rest of those black people. I say why. If I really challenge someone and say why, most of the time their evidence is like kind of like based on stereotypes. The probably the only one I think that would be valid would be like, well, you know, you 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 you're married to a white woman, and I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, that's I don't know if that makes me less black or anything, but I guess that's their like strongest point. But then if they say something like, well, you dress this way or you talk this way. I might do, but then I'll say, do all black people act that way? You know? Right. That makes sense. Right. Right. I don't know. So it's it's a growing process, but that was something that's 
when I think of identity, that's something that's always been a real sore subject of mine. And I think maybe talking about it or processing it over a podcast or talking to you about it, maybe it might be helpful for someone else that's listening about that, like that lots of people question their identity um, when they're faced with some form of adversity. And I think right. it could be helpful. I don't know what I was going yeah. with. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, people, I mean, you, you question it when you're, you know, you're faced with adverse, um, adversity. Um, I mean, you question it as you grow, you know what I mean? And you just got to get, you get, you get to a point where you start to like try to answer some of the questions or just like, Hey, you know what? Like, this is who I am. I'm proud of who I am. And I'm not going to allow people to put me in a box and I'm just going to be me, you know? Um, because that box, right? That box that, and I tell, I tell my students this all the time. I'm like, man, that box that we're supposed to fit in, that society like has, right? Like nobody fits in that box. You know what I mean? But everybody's like striving to like fit into that box. Like people will go and you know they'll get surgery because they don't like this about their body, or you know what I'm saying they'll start acting a certain way. But everybody's different though. Right. You know what I mean? And that's like the beauty in it. Until we get to that point where, like, we're really comfortable, like, within ourselves and our identity and our skin, you know what I mean? Like, it, 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 it's a struggle. Like, like we, we struggle, yeah. you know? It's kind of weird because we're trying to say, like, I think in a, in a certain way, like, people want to be, like, viewed beyond, you know. It's like you want both of it, both of those for us, like. I don't right. want it, like, you know, like Martin Luther King said, I don't want to be judged by the content of my, no, I don't want to be judged by the color of my skin, but the content of my character, right? So right. when I walk around the world, I want people to look at me as full of upstanding person of good morals, right? So I don't right. want people to judge me by the color of my skin. But on the flip side, I do want to acknowledge the color of my skin, and I want to embrace that. So it's kind of like yeah. I want both, if that makes sense. I want yeah, people not- to recognize me as a black male. I yeah. want people to know that I'm black now and I feel part of the community. I feel part of my blackness. I feel, you know, I feel proud of that. But at the same time, I don't want to be judged because I'm a black male. So it's kind of like right. to, I don't know. I mean, I, I, obviously we're not going to solve, it's not like this podcast, we're solving the world's problems or processing it. But that's, that's where, that's where my thinking comes in. Like I want people to be like, Hey, I love Philip for Philip. I, I think Philip's different. Philip's, he's wacky, he's ill Phil, whatever. Um, I love him for who he is as a person he is. But at the same time, I don't want people to be like, well, I love Philip for who he is, but that dude don't act black. <laughs> like, I hate that. I don't know if I can get both or if I'll ever get both. But that's the thing. It's like, what is acting black, man? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like you need to walk around with your, your pants sagging off your butt. Like, you need to walk around. You know what I'm saying? You need to be, like, what? You want, me, you want me to fulfill all the stereotypes? And, like, even if, like, that's not the way I live and that's not the way I, like, who I am, you still want me to to live up to those stereotypes, like just because, like that would be quote unquote acting black. You know what I mean? It's like, come on, man. Like to me, like that that that's ridiculous. Like, but you know what, what I mean? What like, about what about getting it within your own race? How do you feel about that when you get it? Like you know, like these stories, this Mount Vernon story. This what I wasn't referring to just white people. I know, I, I, and I think I think to me like that's that's really corny. You know, especially when it's coming from your own race, like, come on, man, like, especially as, like, black people, like, like, we constantly do that. It's like, we pull yeah. other blacks down, and it's like, then how do we, how do, how can you unite, man, when you constantly divide it? Like, right. you cannot. You know what I mean? And so it's like, on with anything, with the biggest issue or the smallest issue, if you have division within it, like, there's there's no unity. I don't care. Who the, who the speaker is, how powerful that person is, how influential that person is. If you got people within that that um, organization or whatever it may be, like just wanting to divide and just bring down the other or their fellow members, it's like ain't ain't nothing gonna really come from that, man. It's just gonna be turmoil and destruction. Like that's what right. you're gonna get at. Right. You know, so like to be tearing down your own race, man, like. Like, like, how you do that? Like, you forget you black? You know what I'm saying? Like, a black person saying, oh, man, you, you don't act black. Like, 
I mean, what is acting black? Like, for real. Like, seriously. No one can no one can really define that. Right. Unless you're going to just put a bunch of stereotypes. Like, with That's it. What I like you know? Like, what That's what okay. is acting black? Like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is acting like Philip? Like, I can, I can, I can do my best to imitate you. Right. Right? Because I know who you right. are. So, right. like, now I have a definition. I have an example. Like, I can imitate you. I can't imitate just, just black. Like, I, I, unless I'm picking up a crayon and I'm coloring black. Like, I'm putting it on, you know, what is black and I'm just going to color the color black. But I can't. Like you can, you, like you can act you know, like my, you can, you, you can copy my mannerisms and how I talk and and the way I talk, Philip wise. But you can't generalize that same mannerisms and color uh, and dress and music for horror. Yeah, exactly. Like I can, yeah, I can just like you know just try to like yeah do my best to imitate your personality and who you are. You know what I'm saying? But it's like you can't just say oh you know oh, I'm a you know, you 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 acted too white. You know, you can't say that to a black person, or you can't say to even to a to a white person. Or like, yeah, you act black because they use slang. Like, slang is used amongst every culture in every way in different ways. Like, you go to different cultures in in the world, they use they use slang. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, to me, like, you can't even base that on language because language is just different. You know, mm-hmm. and you got you got you got dialect, you got language, like that's so different, and people use that as a way to communicate. Right. So that makes sense. You know, because I don't know, I mean, and, and, it brought, and it brings me back. And like, what do you? Okay, like jumping forward, I read a article about it was saying, you know, this this not saying new phase, but you know, the term for being conscious within your community, obviously being woke, uh, meaning you know. That you know what's going on, you're very conscious about oppressive forces, um, white supremacy or any kind of supremacy, or mainly white supremacy and things like that. Do you think that I was reading an article it's like we should stop as black people saying that certain people are less woke when they have a partner that's a different race? Um, and it was a very powerful article. Um, and I think it also touched base. To, it kind of just coincides that you're saying someone's less black when they're involved with someone of a different race. And I think the thing I drew from that article was that, I guess, when you internalize, I think there is a point where when someone says, oh, you act white or you're not proud to be black, is an accurate statement for someone that actually does exhibit self-hating behaviors and things like that, right? You know, let's say, like, I can't stand black people when you're black. Like, obviously, that person's not woke. Like, that's a very blatantly right. right. But I don't think that you can... And it's, it's ignorance, self-ignorance, self-hate. Mm-hmm. I don't think yeah. – I think the article was touching upon is that if you – just because someone is in an interracial relationship, you can't automatically believe that that person has self-hate about themselves. That's, I mean, oh. that's a true statement. Now, I'm proud, I'm proud to be black, but I'm also in a – I'm married to a white woman, you know? So right. does that automatically coin me and put me in a lump of being um, not woke or – not proud of my own self. That's not a, that's not an appropriate. I think that's not an appropriate, um, you know, appropriate uh, assessment of me, um, right? Or se- appropriate assessment of anyone. Because if we went down the line, then, you know, there's going to be a lot of less woke people out here. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, right. I, I don't know. I think it's just a continuous process. I think that the main thing that really got me sparking about that is like. When you perceive yourself, like, I really, really try to perceive myself as, like, you know, I look in the mirror and I say, this is who I want to be. This is who I'm proud to be. And then you start thinking of characteristics beyond just race of the person that you're in. Like, I want to be, be kind. I want to be known as kind and strong and a good person or a good parent and all those things. And it's always really, really hard when you, when you think, hey, I'm really a good person. I believe that I'm likable. I believe that I, you know, um, you know, such and such, and you face opposition where people will say, no matter how much you perceive yourself to be likable or this and that, you know, people will be like, I hate you. I don't like you. Right. And, and that's and that, that's when you start to question yourself, like, that person doesn't like me. I, I thought I exhibited friendly behavior. I thought I should have friends. I thought everyone should like me. But there's right. going to be a time where it's like, 
no matter what your being is or the person that you want to be and the, and the actions that you are to become that person that you want to be, um, like I said, like, you know, a friendly person, I, I'm good. There's going to be people that no matter what you perceive yourself to be, they're just going to not think of you that way. And right. you have to really come to acceptance of that. And that's, I think, kind of bringing it back full circle is that, you know, I'm a black male. I'm proud of myself regardless of all these, you know, I guess the, the mannerisms or the way I talk or whatever, that there's going to always be someone that's always going to say, I don't think you act black. And I have, right. you have to come, you know, for the positive filter part of this, of this discussion is that you really have to find acceptance in yourself regardless. You just have to like, it's, it's the hardest thing practice what I'm preaching, even saying it out loud and talking to you about it. It's helping me reaffirm that, you know, I know the steps are not the steps, but I know, you know, I know the mindset that I need to take. But it's easier said than done when I'm telling you as my friend or talking to my wife about it or even when I'm raising my son and he's going to come with issues. I'm probably gonna, It's probably going to be easier for me to tell my son, hey, son, you know, the world's going to look at you as a person of color and you're going to face oppression and all this stuff. But it's easy for right. me to say that to him because I'm teaching him a lesson and I'm supporting him right. than actually talking to yourself about it and processing it within yourself. It's always easier to tell other people. If that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, all right. So a couple of things I want to, like, kind of touch on that you said. Um, like, as far as, like, just being likable, right? Like, we, like, you get to a point where you, like, somebody may have an opinion or whatever, and they share that about you or whatever. Um, I think initially, right, you go to that, you care. Initially, you care on some level. It might be very, mm -hmm. very minute but you care on some level because your mind just goes there and like like why doesn't that person like me it just automatically goes there but mm -hmm. i mean if you're comfortable who you are then you like well i don't care you know you can push past that but even though we say like we don't care you know initially we do you know it's like do we do we stay there though or not or do we just kind of move forward you know that's just kind of depends on how comfortable we are with ourselves and how right. much you know and how we've grown. So, I mean, that's definitely like, I mean, that's a good point that you, you know what I'm saying, you brought up and stuff. And to say like, you know, you say, all right, I'm going to talk to my son and it's going to be easier. Man, like us as counselors, like we know this. It's always it's easier to help people than for us if we're, if we're having problems and struggles to go get help ourselves or to even admit that we need help. You know what I mean? Right. It's easy right. to help people, like, sit there and try to help people through their problems. Like, that's easy. You know? Like, yeah. yeah. And, and it's, it's easier it's, to talk, it's easier to talk to yourself when someone was like, like, if you, if, if, if my son came to school and was crying and he was like, yo, someone, you know, called me the N word at school, right? It's easy. Yeah. It's probably, it's, it'd be, I'm not going to lie. It's going to be so hard for me and be upset, but it's, it's going to be easier for me to like say, okay, I've been through that. You know, someone called me the N word. Um, you know, this is, you know, be proud of who you are, son, and talk to him about it, as opposed to the initial reaction that someone did it to me, you know? Um, right. Or it, might be, or it might be 10 times harder because it's happening to it, my it, son. It might, yeah, it might. Who yeah. Knows? You know what I'm saying? That one, that's a, that's, that's one that can go either way. But, I mean, but, 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 but at the same time, like, okay, how about if my son was like, oh, yeah, like I'm playing soccer and they say I don't act black on my soccer team. And then, you know, I can have this discussion with him. From an adult mindset, say, you know what, son, you who you are, blah blah blah, et cetera, et cetera. Be proud of yourself. It's gonna be easy. It's, I know it's gonna be easier for me to tell him and help him than it is for me to process it myself. Right. I, I don't. It just. And you're right. That's what it is. Like usually, sometimes the best helpers or the best healers can do it for other people, but can't heal or help themselves as much. Yeah. Um, but, but you know, it it it, it, it is just a bad Phil, mindset, Phil. you know. Yo, Phil. Yeah. Soccer though. Soccer though. Yeah, yeah you gonna play soccer? Of all the sports you could have picked though. Like oh, no. basketball is like ninety seven percent black. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> Yo, hey, hey, you soccer like soccer 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 is the most uh I bet the most, most international. 
Hey, come on. Hey, hold on. I'm just saying, like, my son, my son, like, my son, and stuff, like, damn, like. <laughs> and then, hey, come I mean, on, let's be real, let's be real, man. You see me play basketball, all right? <laughs> like, like, you, see, you see me play basketball. Like, I don't know, if, I don't know if it's in the cards. I mean, I might be on like LeVar Bell or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But on you know, a, I might, I might push, I might put, I might push my son better than I push myself in basketball. You know? I'm, but on a yeah, you know team, what? Though, like, might, seriously, his 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 soccer team, like, is is he might be, he might be the only. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he'll be the only black kid, so they'll probably be a right. person of color. So, so, then other little, so the other kids are going to be like, you don't act like black because you're on the soccer team. I was like, dang, Billy. I don't know. That's it. For real? <laughs> <laughs> like, you coming at me, huh? <laughs> oh, man. Can you imagine me being a basketball coach? <laughs> yeah. I already, know, I already right. know right now. I'm doing, he's doing track, things I can teach him. Track, right? Not uh, maybe football, but not receiver because I can't catch. <laughs> man, look, he's gonna be an athlete, man. Oh, I you gotta teach him at a young age, man. Like that's all, cause you had the speed. You had the speed, oh, bro. He has the speed, and he has the speed already. And he has the speed. You just gotta work on them hands from a young age, man. You, you know, mm. that's all. Yeah. Now you don't want to play football. He gonna play soccer with his feet. Right. <laughs> but you know, all right. Back to what you were saying, though. You know, kind of. Getting getting on topic though, I mean like yeah, it it'll be easier to help him with that situation and you know what I'm saying like yeah. if you were in it, like so I like yeah I definitely understand that I mean yeah you know at the at the end of the day like my my daughter she is she is half black half white um, right I I'm you know looking at her hair like you know yes. it's very coarse. And she got a fro, and right. you know what I'm saying like people gonna look at her, you know, when she gets older, and they're just gonna put her in the, the, the box of being black. Like, I, I, you know? I, I mean, this is this is a controversial statement of probably the mm. episode, and I'm gonna say it right now. If there's a if if there's mixed children, to me in my mind, I automatically coin them as people of color. I'm sorry, yeah. that's just yeah. that's me. Now, and now that people. You feel free to disagree if you, you know, the listeners out there. But for me, like, Bennett, while he is both black and white, so is Obama. And what do we think of Obama? He's our exactly. first black president. Yep. So our I have, I'm president. Men- mentally, as a black father, I'm going to prepare my son to address the world as if he is a person of color. And I'm, I agree. And I'm going to do the same with my daughter. You know and I mean? with that being um, said, I, I'm already predicting, you know, that sounds bad. Like, people are going to say, okay, maybe the world will be a better place in, you know, certain years. And I agree. Hopefully it's gotten better. But, you know, I, I'm really going to tell them some life, not life lessons, but things like, son, you know, you can't do certain things. You know, you can't right. act like you have to act this way. Um, sounds sad. You know, be careful of your actions, your, pre- per, you know, perception of yourself. You know, be mindful of how you address authority. How you, uh, you know, how you present yeah. yourself in the classroom, like, you know, how you behave, things like right. that. Because, and I have these conversations very deeply with Maggie, and I have to express this wholeheartedly because I need her on the same page about this, you know. She's going to say, I love my son, and my son is, could be anything he wants to be, and I agree with that. But I think she needs, we also need to be on the same page that how we approach our son in regards to race. Yes, he has a full side to him that is white. Yes. You know, grandparents and a whole family that's white. But he also mm-hmm. has a whole family that's black. And the way he looks, I'm telling you right now, the way he looks, he looks like a person of color. Right. So I and, have to and, prepare him for such. Right. And, you know, and I'm, you know, not telling, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to ever tell my daughter not to embrace both sides, right? But right. certain things and certain conversations I'm going to have to have with her, with her, you know, just being being black, you know, so so that she, you know, so she understands and she knows right. because, you know, like she'll she'll get to a point where she's comfortable. She's going to go through that stage where she's kind of battling. She might go back and forth of you know, and then figuring out her own identity. Like that's right, right. She 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 you know she's going to go through that, um, but then she'll get to a point where she's comfortable. But the world. And just the way the world works, they're going to look at her and perceive her 
as, as a black mm-hmm. woman. And so I got to do my best to, you know, to, to have her prepared and raise her, right. you know, to, to understand like some of the things she may come across and some of the things she may, you know, have to deal with and how to. And, and, deal and with the key word is may, you know, I mean, ideally, hopefully they don't have to face anything, right? Like, right. We just like, not like scare tactics, but we prepare them for the, for these extreme scenarios or being called in word or being, you know, uh, you know, picked out and, you know, like certain, like let's, you know, the scenario where like, if, you know, uh, they're acting up in class, but they get singled out, you know, um, just right. because that's the way it is. Prepare them for such. And if it never happens because they have good behavior and, uh, just the world is a better place in 20 years or whatnot, then, right. then, then that's a bonus. Like, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not looking forward to that. I'm not saying I hope that happens. That, that I, I'm, I'll be super elated if that never happens. I'll, I'll be super elated if he never has to face things like that. But I don't right. want him to be caught off guard. And I don't want him to be caught off guard like, honestly, I was caught off guard. Living in a shelter, not a sheltered world, but a pretty sheltered world um, until I lived in Alabama and got called, you know, the N-word for the first time and rocks thrown at me um, in Alabama and then going to Mount Vernon and just not saying I face racism, but just facing that racial identity um, questioning and stuff like that. I, I think that, I think that Mind you, I wasn't as super prepared as I thought I was, um, but at least I can prepare my son for that. And I right. think that if it never happens to my son, it's a bonus. But I don't want him to get caught off guard. I think that would be the worst thing for right. for me to for me to not to prepare for such. Yeah. Um, but I but at the same time, for me to prepare my son, or prepare for me to prepare my son for the world, I need to be educated myself. I need to be well read. And then also for me to prepare my son to have discussions about identity and race, you know, the best way to prepare him would be to prepare myself, you know, um, right. learn, read, you know, read literature, um, watch documentaries, be active in the community, be active about causes that mean something to me. Um, right. If if I do those things, then I can prepare him, you know. So obviously while this journey is something that, it's something that's always going to be present for me. I think, you know, honestly, having my son has awoken that discussion a little bit stronger in me. I don't know if that, that's how you feel. Like, I thought, I thought about, I thought about race a lot. And I thought about race and like being called, um, saying I acted white and all that stuff, you know, off and on throughout life, right? But it never right. drove home until I had my son. And that's right. when it really, really hit home where I was like, I need to have a firm, understanding of myself i need to have a full firm acceptance of myself a healthy acceptance of who i am because if i don't have a healthy acceptance of who i am then i'm going to pass down negative uh perceptions of myself like if i exhibited any self-hate behaviors and insecurities my son's going to pick up on that and then he might exhibit those things so if i wasn't proud of who i was or upset about who I am or embarrassed by who I am or didn't like being who I was, my son's going to pick up on that. He might internalize that. So I feel like having Bennett has actually sparked me to really evaluate those and process those feelings um, and and thoughts and experiences in the past and, you know, um, examples when, you know, I, I was really upset that someone would question you know, question that because if I want to move forward for myself, I need to move forward for myself to help Benny. If that makes sense, right? Hey, not. I mean, I mean, it definitely makes sense. You know, and and you know, I, I agree with that. You know, and and you know, you get you gotta you gotta just be comfortable who you are, and you know, to you, to everyone, anyone that listens to this, you know, if you if you don't like, you know something about yourself, like change it, but make sure you're changing it for you, you know, like really think about that and process that and make sure like, so why am I changing this? Am I changing it for somebody else? Like make sure any change that you're making, you know, hopefully it's a positive one and you're mm-hmm. making that change for yourself. But don't you do know? a Sammy Sosa. Don't do a Sammy Sosa. Nah, though. If you, don't. if you black, if you black, say black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. Positive change, man. Positive change. Yeah, positive change. 
Yeah, don't pull a Sammy Sosa. And if you don't refer, <laughs> just Google Sammy get just Google Sammy Sosa and you'll see you'll see that he did not make a positive change and didn't accept who he was. I don't All know. Right. Can I think of another example besides Sammy Sosa? I don't think that's the only one. I mean they no, say Michael Jackson. Jack- they said he had a skin disease, but come on, man. Like, he can, he can be real. <laughs> yeah, Michael like, Jackson. He can be real. You yeah, know, uh, Michael Jackson for just, sure. Yeah, it's just, I mean, to me, like, I'm just, I'm I'm comfortable. Like, and I don't, I don't think I'd be able to, like, survive here in Idaho if I wasn't. You know, like, I'm, like, yeah. I'm comfortable, like, with who I am. You know, being a black Jamaican male, like, I'm comfortable with that. You know, okay, and, yeah, and speak, I'm, speak I'm proud upon that, that real quick. I'm happy, you know, I'm happy about that. And I know we don't got like you know a ton of time left, but oh, man, whatever. We got, to talk, you man. know, I, I, yeah. well, explain explain how that is that help does that. I mean, honestly, be honest for you, that I feel like that would be a struggle because like it's easier for me to identify being black and feel comfortable with it when I'm surrounded by people of color around me because you know, then I have like support, you know. Right. <laughs> like, so how how do you find strength in that? How do you find strength in being Jamaican and black when it's not as many people of color around you? Because for me, I can walk around, you know, like I said, we did an exercise. I remember we were on the phone one time, and you were like, I was like, yo, I'm going to just walk around Nova campus, right? I'm on Nova's campus. And I was like, oh, there you go. I five black people. I just counted them, like, in two seconds. Um, how do you how do you find, like, how do you find I, strength I, in that? How, how, how do you find strength there? in yourself? Yeah, I'll go through a day and I definitely won't see five black people, like, which is crazy. Like, you know, it's crazy to me. Just like, you know, coming from a place of, you know, so much diversity. But, I mean, like, I just, like, I just, like, I understand, like, like who I am and, like, the, like, what I possess as far as, like, just being able to, I can, you know, like I'm, I'm smart. I'm knowledgeable. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I stay up on current events. I like, I do these things. I can hold a conversation with, with anybody. I can step, I can have a conversation with anybody and hold my own within that conversation. But like, I'm just like, I'm like, I'm truly proud to be a black male. Like, and I can't say like I always felt like that because at the beginning of this podcast I said like I struggled with that with that part of myself, you know? Mm-hmm. Um and so like being here, even when I'm getting looked at and I could tell I'm getting looked at in a you know, in a funny way and people just like they're not they're not really sure about me and you know, I've I've experienced racism here. Um right. you know. And it just it's there's, I mean, a lot of times I just kind of shrug it off. I mean, if it's brought to my face and it's verbalized to me, then I, I'll have a conversation with that person, you know, and, and and talk to them and, like, inquire about, hey, why do you feel this way towards me? And, you know, what causes you to kind of feel this way? And, like, you know, and, and, and have that conversation. Now, if it's getting too heated, then I'll just leave it alone. I'll walk away, you know. Or if right, I feel like right. we're progressing in the conversation, we're just kind of talking in circles, and there's no need for me to stay because then it's just going to lead to that point where emotions probably going to run too high. Um, yeah. But and so like, like I feel like I have no choice but to be, you know, or figure out how to navigate this. And I like sometimes I don't understand how I do it. Like sometimes I don't understand how I like I can't believe I'm here. You know, like yeah, I'm living in Idaho, like my all places. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like I can't yeah. believe like this is where I live now. Um, and so, and based on my situation, I'm gonna be here for a while. You know what I mean? So, but yeah. you know, it is what it is, and you just like you know, I you know I talk to I talk to my friends, I talk to those people that are important, my family. You know, they give me strength. Like you know, I do pray. You know, I do read my Bible. I find strength in that. You know, in my religion. Right. So in my faith, I find I find strength in that. And so you know, and just know, like obviously, like I really do feel like everything happens for a reason. And so, like, there's a reason and a purpose for this, and the reason and purpose I'm going through this. And so, like, this is just a part of my story. You know, right. and I'll be stronger for it when I come out on the other end because you know, like, because I ain't gonna let it break me. 
like, <laughs> you know, that's what it is. So even when I get down, yeah. like, you know, you find comfort in that stuff. And so, so sometimes, and you found like, comfort in, you found comfort in the strength of you being black. Yeah. Like sometimes, you know, I, like, sometimes I think about that too. Like, honestly, like when you think about like obstacles and stuff, like this sounds real. I don't know. If, I'm not going to say it sounds cheesy, but it might sound like a movie. So I'm like, okay, well, first of all, I'm living in a house. A couple of years ago, my ancestors didn't have a house. Okay, I'm driving my own car. A couple of years ago, my essence couldn't get their own car. You know, I think of things like that. Does that make sense? It's kind of weird. Yeah, uh, yeah. That makes uh, sense. I mean, it's, I got a, I got a, job, I got a opportunity to go to college. You know? Yeah. I mean, putting things, things in like that. Put things you know? in perspective. Yeah. I, so I, so I do find strength in my identity too. If that makes sense. Like I find a lot of strength in that. I find a lot yeah. of strength in my last name. I find a lot of strength in my my family and you know, my grandparents and people before me. Um, and so, like, yeah, I guess I can, I can I can, identify that, you know, having a faith and having things that, you know, like sometimes having those things that you do identify or uh, categorize yourself, you find strength in those too, you know? Like, right. not only is it like a term like, like, hey, you know, certain, like you find, you can find a strength in something that usually was something that you struggled with, like, Let's say someone says you act corny, right? Like, yeah. people say I act corny. I'm corny. I'm a corny person, right? But then I mm-hmm. thought about it. There's a strength in me being corny because over time, like, I've never tried to be cool. And I think that me being, like, there's no pressure to be cool. If you're corny, if you're already corny, as I am, like, then there's no pressure to be cool. I found strength in just being corny because it's in there. I can just get away with stuff. I get away with being goofy. Because I'm corny. Right. I'm already corny. Right. Like, what, I, what right. else do I got to lose? Um, right. So, like I said, if there's something like that, if there's something like, if you feel like you're oppressed by being a black male, which is, um, you know, some you will face a, oppression, you can also, you can, you can say, well, you know what? I already found strength in that, too. At, 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 it may be something that's a thing that causes adversity in my life, labels and things, but then at the same time, you can find a strength in those labels, you know? Right. I don't know. I don't know. That was just a roundabout way. Just like, way to positive reframing it. Yeah, and 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 putting a positive spin on it. And you know what I'm saying? I understand that. And you know, and I also understand the other side of it, just being like, man, like I'm tired. I'm like, why do I always got to feel like I got to explain myself? Why do I always got to feel like yeah. I got to like yeah. act different? I got to present myself different. You know what I mean? Like, I like I know I have to when I go to work. I got to dress a certain way. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I can't wear mm-hmm. certain things to to work. And, you know, and it, it'd be cool, you know, like I got shirts and stuff like that, that, that are very pro black, you know, I wear that to, to work. That's going to ruffle some feathers, you know what I'm saying? One of those feathers being like whoever may be a supervisor. And then, then all of a sudden it's a problem. I can't afford to put my job in jeopardy. Why? Because my daughter is dependent on me and my job and my income. So, right. you know what I mean? Like, it's like, why do I always got to, you know, kind of tote the line or walk the line? Like, you know what I mean? I can't just, right. like, outright just, you know, but, like, you know, the world ain't fair. You know, life ain't right. fair. You know, and so there's certain things, like you said, adversity is going to come for everybody, man. It rain on the just and the unjust, right? So, right. like, there's, <laughs> there's going to be stuff that you just going to have to deal with, and you got to make the best of it, you know, putting that positive spin on it, you know. Find strength you know, in so, it. And find, find challenges in it. And then, like, yeah, and, you know, and kind of and, and move forward, you know, because if you don't, like, then you just sit there and you just kind of waste away, you know? Right. And you find strength in it. And obviously yeah. when you question, right, if someone questions who you are and then you have to question who you are, well, then that can also be an opportunity for you to discover who you are. Right. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like, perfect. Because then it, that's perfect. Why yeah. you're – why why you're why you are questioning like what is it to be black, then you're gonna go and research not research being black, but just research black you know, blackness, black culture and yeah. the culture and, and educate yourself and then guess what? You gain something out of that. You gain que- right. you gain something out of being questioned. Right. And you became more sure of yourself. So I think that's right. a good way to end the podcast. You know, I think this is probably one of our this is definitely our longest episode. Um, for sure. Obviously, we're gonna have <laughs> I'm gonna have Hillary McMorris as a reoccurring guest, aka might even morph into a co-host. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but you know, um, because obviously you support my 
support for my dreams and my things that I want to do. That's but right. I think, Anytime you need uh, me, man, I'm there for you, bro. So whatever yeah. it is, man, I always got your back, man. You know, like, you got me, I got you, man. Like, we in this together, bro. You know what? I'm even thinking about this off the cuffs of my head. We're gonna, I'm going to do um, a Q&A, a Q&A um, episode of the podcast, and I want you to be on it. So what I want the listeners to do is if you have any questions, whether it's pertaining to friendship or this episode of identity, whatever, uh, if you're friends with Hillert, I'm not going to ask him to put out his info, but if you're already friends with Hillert, send Hillert some questions. He'll forward them to me. If you have any questions for me, um, either say ask the positive, hashtag ask the positive filter um, on Twitter, email me as well. And we'll we'll set up a time. We're going to do a Q and A. Is that how's that sound, Hillary? Sounds good to me, man. All right, Sounds man. Good to me, man. So, I appreciate so, you again, man. Like all you people, man. Please keep supporting Phil, man. What he's doing, it's going to change the world, man. It's going to be something big. You know, I can't say it enough, but man. Like I am very proud of you, my brother. Like you are, you're doing something awesome. Yeah, I'm proud of you too, man. have been listening to Positive Filter, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help along the way. Positive Filter was edited by Ronald Young Jr., host of Time Well Spent Podcast and creator of Oh It's Big Ron Studios. For this episode, I'd like to give a special thanks to Aaron R. for the poem at the beginning of this episode. His book, Poetically Correct Volume 1, can be found on Amazon, and his poems are also available online at aaronrpoems.blogspot.com. Major shout out to my main man, Hillard, for the guest appearance, Ryan for the music, Maggie for always being a supportive wife, and all the listeners. If you have any questions for Positive Filter, please message me or use the hashtag AskPositiveFilter on Twitter. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your family and friends. Spreading positivity is a movement. Thanks for listening.